Hi, my name is Drew Moore with Advanced Trading. Today I have a commercial advisor, Michael Reginelli, and our economist, Brian Basting. And uh, we're going to recap the USDA report for October. As of this taping, corn is down six cents, November soybeans down 25 cents, and uh, we've got Dece wheat uh, still up 10 cents right now. So, Michael, first question, what was your take on the uh, the corn, corn figures today? Uh, not a lot of excitement on the corn side. They increased the yield marginally, but I think it was kind of right in line with trade expectations. You know, 0.2 bushel per acre increase, very little to talk about there. Uh, they did take exports up 25 million, which I think is probably going to be met with some skepticism given the pace of sales and shipments today. Um, there was a natural demand decline because they did take feed down a little bit, sure. left ethanol unchanged. The only other thing on corn is the uh, world corn stocks were about 4 million metric tons higher than they were last month, which is interesting, but that's what's creating a little bit of the bearish momentum, I think. Sure. On the domestic side, how does that play out with your intentions on cash markets, spreads moving forward? And probably not enough change to really take this report and, and change the framework dramatically. Um, cash markets are still um, kind of fairly weak on the back end, mm -hmm. certainly stronger than soybeans, but um, it still maybe limits spread potential, uh, you know, as we kind of go forward into the carry markets. Um, but as we kind of move forward, I think that's what we'll have to keep an eye on. A lot of that's going to be related to the pace of farmer selling and as we get through harvest, how much actually commercial ownership we have as we, as we put this crop away. I think that'll be more, you know, more, more indicative to how basis and spreads look. Absolutely, absolutely. Brian, how about uh, on the, the soybean side of the spectrum? Really saw a big bump, a notable bump in yield. Drew, looking at this 2021 crop, confirms what we've heard from the country. Yep. Really appreciate the input from the country, and that really confirms, USDA confirmed what we'd heard. And now we're looking at a carry out, Drew, over 300 million bushels for uh, 21, 22. We're looking at oil stocks also higher than expected here, right. with a larger carry in supply of oil stocks and the larger soybean crop. Sure. Uh, we're really looking at, at some changing dynamics, supply and demand, supply and demand wise, for soybeans. Now we're going to focus on South America. Will these bigger crops in Brazil and Argentina be realized? Sure, sure. Good points, good points. Um, looking at fertilizer prices right now and, and being at, at nine-year highs, right, um, what does that tell you in terms of acreage uh, intentions for next spring in corn and soybeans? It's a great question, Drew, because as uh, the viewers know, we've seen a, a big, sizable jump in these input costs. The market is trying to save the corn acre, just if you will. By that I mean, as recently as mid-September, we had the soybean to corn ratio for 2022 over 2.5, right. favoring beans. Mm -hmm. However, as we tape here today, that's closer to 2.3. And there have been some historical trends when we look at the corn acreage trying to battle its way back into the, the farmer's rotation, if you will. We've seen that come closer to 2.0. Very critical the next 45 days, Drew. See what that spread does. It'll have a big impact on the farmer's intentions for 22. Today, I would say a backing off a little bit on the corn acreage for next year, but it all depends, I think, quite a bit on what we see the next uh, 30 to 45 days. Absolutely. Thank you, Brian. Michael, you've seen a lot of uh, yield data and, and been able yeah. to comb through a lot of, of corn yield data. Um, looking at what the USDA stated today for October, is that in line with what you see panning out into the, the January uh, final number? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think it's probably right in line. They didn't really throw a shock at the market, you right. know, incremental increase in corn yield. Uh, bean yield was up about one bushel per acre, which I think is kind of what we've expected based on the, you know, anecdotal reports. Um, sure. You know, we were thinking maybe it could flex up to 52. Um, you know, feels like it's at this point, it's probably going to be somewhat static on the bean side, if anything maybe creeps a little bit higher, but not dramatically so. Sure. I, don't, I don't see it really going the other direction. And on corn, it feels like we're, we're pretty close based on kind of where we're at today. Still a lot of harvest to go though. That's right, that's right. Uh, Brian, what, uh, what stood out to you in, in wheat today? It's the breakdown of classes, Drew, for 21-22. USDA cut another 2 million tons off Canada's crop. We're now looking at the hard red spring carryout for 21-22, less than half of what it was last year. When you look at hard red winter, that carryout's down about 27% from last year, but actually the soft red winter carryout's fractionally higher projected compared to last year. So really got some divergence amongst classes there. Nevertheless, across the spectrum, tightening up on wheat stocks, we're gonna keep a close eye on these final yields in Australia and Argentina. Mm -hmm. Right now, it looks like we've got a bumper crop coming in Australia. Still the jury's out, if you will, in Argentina. 
but I do think we're going to see a bump in acreage here in the northern hemisphere led by the U.S. this fall because we've got some tremendous insurance prices out there for 22. And we've got some pretty good planting conditions overall for 22 uh, for next year's crop uh, being realized this fall. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Michael, last question for you. Uh, we've seen nearby crude eclipse $80 per mm -hmm. barrel. Um, the U.S. dollar index is, is creeping up on 95, um, mm -hmm. coincidentally. So what's your take in terms from an, uh, from an investment into the ag space, ag yeah. space as an asset class? What do you, what's your perception there? Uh, right now, managed money is still holding net longs. Obviously, we're well off where we were in the summer and earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be interesting to see how we play out later in the year as we kind of paint a more bearish picture, particularly in soybeans. Um, you know, we could see some divestment, I guess, out of, out of the bean market or, or the oil seed complex. Sure. The caveat to that would be if we continue to see soybean oil be supported, which obviously there's an influx of bearish data mm -hmm. today, um, which could drag the complex a little bit, and especially as we see kind of Brazil come to fruition, if there's no crop issues like we saw last, you know, no, late November into December um, stressing that crop, and it feels like they're heading towards record production with the potential for an increase in U.S. bean acres, you know, we could maybe see some money get pulled out of that. But in general, it feels like from an asset allocation standpoint, um, these guys will continue to maintain some semblance of, of net longs, at least in the ag commodity space, I think for the foreseeable future. Yep, makes sense, makes sense. Well, thank you both very much for your time today. Yep.